ripple the image. In this shader we're going to play around with which texel to select from a texture image to give the appearance of a ripple. Don't worry, it's surprisingly easy. First, let's add a new property. Slide up to the properties section and enter underscore duration, duration, float equals 6.0. And just below the sampler 2D line add float underscore duration. Great, we're ready to update the main function. Replace the existing code with float2pos equals i.position.xy times 2, float len equal length pos, float 2 ripple equal i dot uv plus pos divided by len times 0 0.03 times cos len times 12 minus underscore time dot y times 4. Float theta equal f mod underscore time dot y underscore duration times unity underscore 2 underscore pi divided by underscore duration. Float delta equals sine theta plus 1 divided by 2. Float 2 uv equals lerp ripple i dot uv delta. Fix 3 color equals text 2d underscore main text uv dot rgb. The float 2 pos is set to the value i dot position dot xy times 2. Then we save the length of the vector as the variable len. It's important that the center of the screen in this coordinate space is at 0, 0. We can do this by using the varying i.position that ranges from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 for our quad. By multiplying this by 2 we're in the range minus 1 to 1. Now we want to create a new uv value which we call ripple that is the current i.uv varying plus a value. Let's take a careful look at how we generate the value ripple. This is where the ripple will set the UV. By adjusting the value of UV, we can grab the color of the current pixel from a different part of the texture image, a different texel. By default, we grab the texel from position i.uv. But if we adjust this value, we can create all manner of effects. Notice that the value ripple is generated by adding pos divided by len times 0 0.03 times cos len times 12 minus underscore time dot y times 4 to the current value for i dot uv. Pos divided by len times 0 0.03 gives a value that radiates from the center of the screen. Imagine drawing a line from the center of the screen to the test point. The pixel that we choose to use will be somewhere on this line. So we pull in the pixel color from somewhere on the image that is either closer to the center or further away. The direction is chosen by the value returned from the cos function. This takes the len value and multiplies it by 12. Try adjusting this value, you'll see that it affects the number of ripples, while the multiple of time simply affects the speed of the ripple. Try replacing delta with zero on this line. Now you see a continuous ripple effect. The delta value coupled with mix interpolates between the ripple value for uv and i dot uv. When delta equals 0, 0.0, the lerp function returns ripple. When delta equals 1, the lerp function returns i dot uv. Between these values, the return value is an interpolation of these two float two quantities. Take a look at how we generate the delta value. First we get the remainder of underscore time dot y divided by underscore duration using the fmod function. The sine function needs parameters in the range 0 to 2 pi. The fmod value will be in the range 0 to underscore duration. To get the correct range we multiply by 2 pi divided by underscore duration. The sine function returns values between minus 1 and 1. We add 1 to this and divide by 2 to move to 0 to 1 as the possible values. We've done this a lot in this course. So we get a value that varies between 0 and 1 over a time span of duration. Using sine in this way is very common where time is included in a shader. Now we know how to ripple a texture. This video comes from my Unity Shader course. Get the full course for a great discount by following this link. See the description for a link to the resources.